What's good, everybody? It's Michaelo here, and today I want to try out a different format. I'm um, just in front of my iPhone camera instead of in front of my GoPro this time. Something a bit different. Hope you like. And I wanted to talk about today something that has been uh, a difficult thing for me for the past five years. Maybe for pretty much my whole life. Well, not really, not really. When I was a kid, I understood this innately and it allowed me to push through. Uh, but it really isn't as difficult as we make it seem to be. It really isn't as hard as we may believe it in our mind. We See, we have a story for absolutely everything that we want to do. And I found that in my life, when I started to learn how to make music, at the very beginning stages, there wasn't as big of a story as what I had cultivated after the first few months of making music. In my first two months of making music, I believe I made like like five, six songs, and then, well, five, six uh, individual singles. And then I made an EP. I made that much music in the first two months of me making music. And then the story started to build up around me making music and what it could lead to and where it could go. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the cameras, but there's three of them and I don't know which one I'm supposed to look at. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, a story started to develop around me making music. Oh my gosh, you see, my, my parents have been doing it for a long time and my sister's been doing it. So now I, I do it as well. And the thing is, because I'm a tech person, I can do it even more. I can record myself. I can put tracks together. I can do the production. I can do the singing. I can do all the aspects. Oh my gosh, this is going to become something. This is going to get bigger. And it switched from being in this moment, I'm making something that seems interesting to me just because I want to make it to being I'm creating a legacy. And that's a huge idea. That's a huge idea that makes it a lot more difficult than it naturally should be. And it's it's dangerous to let the idea balloon. But the thing is, it's not like it's not like something that's easy to stop. It becomes a piece of your identity. And when it becomes part of your identity, it now takes up this different space. It becomes part of your ego. It lives in that center, in that mind center of the ego. And now, if anything is done that is considered a negative, that becomes an attack on the ego. And now it's difficult to do the thing. Difficult to do the thing, but it really shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. And I feel like you can create structures around that. Eventually you can get to the point where it's like, okay, I know my ego is going to flare up in this sort of a way, but I'm going to push past that. But at the start of a situation like that, where it starts to flare up in that way, I, I find myself going here. And I think this could help you as well. Cause I know it's helped me. It's helped me a ton. In fact, at the beginning of this year, actually the first time I ever did this, uh, it was like two years ago, 2021. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, no, three years ago. Oh my gosh, I don't know math. It's about to be 2025. My God. Uh, three years ago, 2021, at the very end of the year, it was, oh, it was November, like now. I did a challenge, a song every single day for 30 days. It was a beautiful challenge. It was good for me to do. And I got through that challenge. And in 30 days, I made maybe five to 10 tracks that I liked. And I think I only ended up publishing five of the tracks from that period. Like I turned them into full tracks and published them. I Improve was one of those tracks. And that was the track, the first song on my Spotify to get to 10,000 plays. Somebody picked it up. I think it was a Spotify algorithm playlist picked it up and it brought it up and then other playlists started adding it and now it's at 10,000 plays. It came from that period of time where I was just doing it every single day and I came out with a couple gems and a lot of other shit. But you know what? I learned a lot from doing all of that. So that is one way. It is just to like sort of dedicate yourself to work within these sort of constraints that you have 
within this period of time and just get something done. Make it a game, make a game out of it. And you just need to get to the end of the game. And that way you can just keep on going back at it, going back at it. Your ego doesn't have time to tell you to stop <laughs> because you're on a timer. Your ego doesn't have time to tell you to stop because you're on a timer. And it's funny because I was thinking about it. The method that I did at the beginning of this year was pretty much the same method. I just didn't dedicate myself to doing 30 days of it. Instead, I just did it as much as my heart felt like doing it. And so what I did was I made this project called Avant Garde. And it's just 15 songs. And the constraints that I created was it had to be simple. So it had to be a minute long. I could only use, I think I only used six tracks from Ableton. And um, yeah, six tracks from Ableton. It had to be a minute long and the BPM had to be 150. That way it was consistent every single time. I had one track which had all my drums in it. I had a track which was a melody. I had a track which was bass. I had my main vocal track and then I had my, um, my which ad lib track. And then later on, I think, no, no, it was like a five track, but then later on I turned it into a six track. And that's where I start every single time I make a song now. I start with a six track and I just want to get in a small idea. And if the small idea sounds nice, I'll make it bigger. But yeah, I made those constraints and I would time myself, see how quickly I could get it done. Quickest one that I ever did was, was 30 minutes where it became a full song. In fact, I put it up on my YouTube. It's called Best Friend. And it sounds okay. <laughs> it sounds pretty okay. I did a decent job with that one. And Avant Garde was pretty much the same sort of process. And it was just so fun to make these constraints. But then at the same time, I let go of everything else. There was no expectation for it to be anything. It could be anything. And well, there was no ex expectation for it to be anything. So it could be everything. The limits allowed me to tap into unlimited potential. And it was, it was quite an interesting thing for, for the art. It was, it was good stuff. And I feel like that can be taken and brought into many different fields. Um, yeah, that's sort of the, the processes that I went to to get to the point where now if I open up Ableton, I know for sure that I could create something like it's not going to be total garbage. <laughs> I know for sure I can create something. But before I had gone through these practices, like in fact, I need to do these practices more often just to remind myself that creation is supposed to be easy. Like you should get to the point where you can flow through it. And to do that, you just sort of have to get your mind out of it. You get your mind out of it, you get your heart into it. You get your mind out of it, you get your heart into it because the mind is the one that's playing all these stories where it's like, oh my God, I'm not good enough. It's not good enough. It needs to be better. The heart is just loving. Oh my gosh, I hear this sound. It lo I love that. Oh my gosh, I hear this other sound. I love it. The combination of these two sounds. Oh, I love it. My soul feels good. That's where we're supposed to be in creation. It's supposed to be in the heart, not in the head. The head just gets in the way. Of course, you can get to the point where you're using both elements. Next thing you know, you make something absolutely amazing. And that's what it, it ends up being. You get to that point. But when you're starting off and when you're finding it difficult, you need to go into your heart. And then eventually later on, you can go into your head and be like, OK, what is well, how are we going to structure this? How are we going to structure these 50 songs that I created from the heart? Uh, which ones sound the best? OK, I found 12 of them, which are the absolute best. Oh my God, I have an album. I just need to make it bigger. And now you go back and, and now you, you decide how long do you want it to be? And now since you have an idea of what the verse and the chorus looks like, do you want to do a pre-chorus or anything like that? Okay, you can start structuring it. And then you can go back into the heart and be like, okay, what sounds do I want to add? What, what do I want to add to make it better? What do I want to do? What do I want to do? And you'll be able to use both of them in tandem like that. They all, they both have their place. You're not here. You're more here than you are here. And so it's important to get into your heart and to create from the heart. That's how you can look at like, 
an art piece and be like, hmm, I don't understand why people care about this. It's because it was a piece made from the heart. If it's made from the head, yeah, you can pump money into it, but it's not going to be as impactful as something that's made from down here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to catch y'all later. See ya.